Hi everyone, welcome. I'm preparing to check in on the systems that are referred to as my odd couple bins. As you can see, I've got systems that are sort of teamed up. The ones that you see stacked up over here are bins that have the same start date and they're the same age. But the odd couple bins are the ones that got paired up despite the fact that there was a 60 days difference in their ages. And they're the ones that you see up here on the upper right with the paper and cardboard covering and the one that you see down here with the red plastic covering. 14 days have passed since the last time we checked in on them. And I think they're due for some food. So I've got some warm chow for them and a little bit of leafy matter. The, um, the leaves off of a bunch of radishes. It ain't much, but whatever. It's a, an excuse to come in and check in, see how they're doing. So we're going to get them up on the bench and we're going to get them fed. So let's get started. Yeah, like I said, it's not much. And it doesn't have a lot of weight to it either. <laughs> but we're going to complement it with a little bit of my worm chow. And like I said, it's kind of just an excuse to get in here and feed them. Before I get my hands soiled, just a couple bits of info about the systems. The older bin over here is the 304-day-old system. Four days ago, we missed their 300th day in service. So, happy 300 days in service. <laughs> and 244 days over here. 26 times fed in the older system, 20 times fed in the newer system. So, despite the relatively small size of the feeding, I still count it as a feeding. And I'm curious to see how those strawberries did. A lot of times when I'm covered in plastic, I know there's a lot of moisture recirculating across the top surface. And, and then you know the worms are gonna be a-okay -A going there. But sometimes when um, you allow things to be a little bit drier, you tend to see a bit less worm traffic. But, you know, if you were to place a, a number of yummy snacks out there for them, such as strawberry and worm chow, then that might just be the motivation they need to overcome their reluctance to go onto the dry material in pursuit of the yummy food. You can even see the difference. I'll bring it back quickly. The feeding zone indicator we laid out here on top. These were probably in very similar condition 14 days ago when we last checked in here. But over here where there was just paper and cardboard, the absence of moisture resulted in a fairly untouched feeding zone indicator. The feeding zone indicator here is pretty much history. And you know, I guess the, the way I was planning on feeding might even not require feeding zone indicators. I've been trying to transition to a different feeding method in my older systems, and these are definitely among my older systems. Um, a feeding pattern different from my typical, which is just to dig a trench and put the food down in the middle. I've been trying to apply the food pretty evenly out uh, throughout the top surface to motivate the worms to just, you know, ex explore the entire expanse of the system versus just being focused in one particular spot. The hope is that they, um, you know, continue working materials down throughout the system. So it was um, 14 days ago that they came up for the strawberries, but they've not yet managed to break down the, the little leafy tops of the strawberries. These are those little leafy tops of the strawberries. Well, you know, not too surprising. That portion of the strawberry is not going to bring with it a great deal of juiciness. So they probably came up for the yummy portion of the berry and gobbled all that up and then left these leaves for another day. So we'll just blend that stuff in. By being down below the surface, it'll probably get consumed out here with a, a fair bit of moisture. My guess is that we're not going to see any leftovers of that after 14 days. I guess if we looked really hard, we might stumble on one or two, but maybe not. So let's... um. Let's just give both systems a quick inspection to see if our top feeding and, you know, kind of spread out feeding style is producing the desired result of worms throughout the material. Is this strawberry? Something kind of juicy here. I don't know. I couldn't resist putting it up to my face to take a whiff to see what it smelled like, but I couldn't tell what it was. And it's not all that interesting. So out here on the very far edge, right away, we're already 
seeing worms hanging out in the material. The stuff on the surface is kind of dry, not terribly dry, perhaps if we had only a piece of newspaper on top, but I think that additional layer, the cardboard, helped with retention of moisture to a certain degree. So we're going to do our best to just blend in that stuff that's been out on the surface so that it can uh, get hydrated and also get the attention of the worms to break down any stuff that's there. And also it'll, uh, it'll just absorb some of the moisture from the materials that it's being, being blended with too, bringing the overall moisture level of the whole system down a little bit. As you can see out here too on this far edge of the system, good number of worms. A lot of times I kind of expect to see the, the bulk of the worms in a system down near the middle, which is where I typically feed, but by feeding throughout the entire top surface, um, I have found that it does seem to help worms not feel like they're going to need to huddle in one particular spot, but rather cruise around the entire system and explore. And in the, you know, in the process, continue breaking stuff up. I don't know what this is. I'm, I'm pretty sure it's ended up in my hand a number of times and it is so stiff. It even makes me wonder whether it's something that could even break down. So I'm just going to pull it, pull it out and maybe perhaps once it's dried off, maybe I can flake off some of the castings material that's adhering to it to get a better sense of what the heck that thing was. Even when I dropped it onto the table, it had this really hard sound to it, almost like a rock. So perhaps it is just something that's never going to break down despite how much time it spends in the worm bin. So I um, figured now was a good time since I did happen to bump into it to simply exclude it, remove it from the system and leave the worms with only materials that they can actually break down for me, not a bunch of stuff that's just going to sit there idle in the bin and take up space. So we've pretty much stirred all the material around, bought up some of the more damp stuff that was down low, tilled in all the somewhat drier material that had been sitting out on the surface so that it can possibly absorb some of the system's excess moisture. These, these things definitely had a good bit of weight, both systems, when I lifted them up and carried them over here to the bench to work on them. So I, uh, I could definitely see the benefit to, to letting these systems dry a little bit. So feeding zone indicators, you know, we're not really going to have a specific feeding zone in here anymore after we simply apply the food throughout. So maybe this kind of torn up feeding zone indicator can just be blended in with the material and it'll just get consumed as food. So this stuff has definitely got some good moisture content to it too. I'm wondering if perhaps in here it might be also to the benefit of the system to switch over to a more porous, breathable top covering. But you know, since the system is 60 days behind in age, I thought that perhaps more important was the presence of the moisture to give the worms um, the ability to continue breaking materials down and to get the state of things in here as fine as we saw in the older system, although they are starting to equalize to a certain point. There used to be a pretty distinct difference when you would look in the older bin versus the younger bin in terms of just leftover bedding materials over here in the younger bin versus the older bin not having quite as much. So I think we're just going to stick to that game plan of allowing the younger system here to maintain its higher level of moisture for a little while longer, at least until such a time that we start to see a little bit more development on some of these slower composting bits of the old bedding that was added, such as, such as these leaf stems, of which I see quite a number in here. I mean, they're in here too, to a certain degree, but not quite as many. And by blending them down into the lower reaches of the system where there's still a good bit of moisture, they'll continue breaking down over here too. They're over there, well, in both places. But I, um, I think there's also a good benefit to aerating the material 
in the systems. Give it a good little injection of oxygen down into the into the material. And I mean the, the worms themselves are always kind of cruising through and kind of bioturbinating or whatever the word is. They're kind of tilling up the material just in the process of living in it and moving around throughout it. So it's something that would happen anyway. But um, but yeah, we're introducing a little bit of air down into the the bed so that it can uh, remain nice and happy and healthy as an environment for the worms to thrive in. So I think that's pretty much we were at what we were after here today. Um, not a lot of use for this thing, <laughs> but we'll keep it around. What the heck? Um, let's sprinkle in some of my worm chow out here on the surface. Luckily by keeping the cardboard top on, I believe that the surface is still approachable by the worms as we saw by how they did away with the strawberry and hopefully they'll do the same here with the worm chow and these bits of radish leaf. Not a whole lot but Hopefully enough that we can just sort of sprinkle it out here on the top surface, give them a little treat. A lot of times when the worm bins start to get to these um, late stages in their life cycle, I um, just simply give them nothing, you know, and kind of force the worms to circle back into the material that they inhabit and seek out any sort of residual bits of leftover food and bedding so that we end up with even that much more fine material in the end but as long as we're coming in here to check on them anyhow to till up and aerate their material why not use that as an opportunity to do away with a little bit of kitchen scraps too right certainly stuff that's not going to last very long so why don't we just share this thing used to be the feeding zone indicator we don't really have much of a feeding zone anymore but we'll just slop it in the middle there and sort of stick to our little custom of having one in the worm bins. So that's pretty much it for our check-in with the odd couple worm bins. Things look really nice in here. I can't complain, that's for sure. Definitely like what's happening here. Both systems look really nice. Good bit of weight, pretty heavy with possibly what we might consider to be excess moisture in these systems, but I'm not complaining. I think it's okay. We'll eventually get both systems covered with perhaps only a piece of newspaper, but I think plastic over here in the younger one for now. And is there a worm inside? <laughs> this little guy was in the plastic bag. Sometimes I worry these worms end up in a place where they're not going to be able to get out of. No food, no nothing. Can't be good for them to end up in a plastic bag. It's the reason I try to aim the opening of the bag sort of up and out of accessibility range to a certain point but you'll always get those few worms that gotta explore <laughs> luckily we were able to get that little guy out of there and prevent possible catastrophe so that's it for the check-in everyone hopefully you enjoyed it i got a few things i got to take care of getting cleaned up and put away but i'm not going to waste your time with that that's boring before I go really quick, let me just say thank you. Thank you so much for watching. Hopefully you enjoyed the video. If you did, as always, please don't forget to leave me a quick thumbs up before you go. That's always really appreciated. And if you haven't done so already, please also consider subscribing to the channel. That's very much appreciated as well. All right, everyone, have a great day. Thanks for watching. Bye now.